Hi, this is my electric car in the carport that we built for it. Shortly after we built it, we had to take down several unstable trees, and as a result, it now gets sun most of the day, so decided to put some solar panels on it. Now, I could connect those to the grid, but we already have 32 grid tied panels, so decided to use these just to charge the car. And you can see we're charging at 530 watts, which is typical of a sunny winter day. And we're charging it directly. That is, the panels are in series and they're wired pretty much directly to the battery with uh, just some minimal controls and interface in between. Now this is kind of an unusual EV. It's a Solak Evcourt, built in 1988. It has a DC CEPX motor that runs at about 120 volts DC, which is about one-third the voltage of your average modern EV. So, I wouldn't recommend you try this direct charging with your 400 volt Tesla, but for these lower voltage conversion EVs, it works quite well. As a rule, you can't just connect solar panels directly to a battery. You need some sort of charge controller, and usually that's an MPPT, or Maximum Power Point Tracking Controller. There are two main reasons to use a controller. One is to avoid overcharging, which can easily ruin a lithium battery. But I already have an Orion battery manager in the car, which can automatically switch off charging when the batteries reach full charge. The other reason for MPPT is to maximize power output of the panels. An MPPT controller draws just enough current to keep the voltage of the panels at the level giving maximum power, and then it efficiently transfers that power to the battery pack at whatever voltage the battery requires. This is especially important for lead-acid batteries, whose voltage changes significantly over the charging cycle. It's much less true for lithium batteries, where voltage is nearly constant over most of the cycle. In my case, the battery voltage is almost always between 115 and 121 volts. So if I can build a solar array with a maximum power point around 120 volts, there's not that much to be gained from maximum power point tracking. And that's fortunate since I couldn't even find an MPPT controller with a DC output of 120 volts at least not at any reasonable price. Here's the panel I chose for my array. It's a nominal 12 volt, 100 watt panel designed for off-grid use, such as on an RV. I chose it in part because it only weighs 14 pounds, which makes it a lot easier to handle up on a roof than a typical 50 pound full-size panel. It has a stated open circuit voltage of 20 volts and produces maximum power at 17 volts. So an array of eight panels in series would produce maximum power at about 136 volts. But that's at 25 degrees C. Panels in direct sun usually run a lot hotter than that, which shifts the whole power curve to lower voltage. So once I got the panels, I determined the power curve under actual operating conditions. So here's my setup for checking these panels. I've got one panel out. It's oriented as close as I can get to perpendicular to the sun. It's a nice sunny day, not a cloud in the sky. And then to dissipate the power, it's a little hard to dissipate 100 watts at 3 ohms, which is about what you need. So instead, I'm going to dissipate most of the power by charging batteries. And these are batteries exactly the same as the ones uh, in, the, in the EV that I eventually want to charge. So the negative of the panel is going directly to the negative of the battery. And then the positive of the panel is going directly to this voltmeter and also through the green cable to uh, a 10 amp ammeter 
and then from there to this probe and then it'll go through this bank of small resistors there's a one ohm some 0.2 ohms and 0.12 ohms and then from there uh, into the battery so now the panel's warmed up a little bit already it started at 18 and a half volts now just from heating up in the sun it's going down to about uh, 18 volts and so if I put for example the full uh, the full string of resistors here which is about 1.76 ohms you can see the voltage has gone down to 17 volts and there's a current of 1.86 amps or if I put it say down here this is just 0.12 ohms now the voltage has dropped to 15.3 and the current is up to 6 amps which is about as high as it's going to go but I'm just going to go through all these resistors so we get a curve of output voltage versus output current and then we can see where the uh, maximum power point is here's the result of those experiments the x-axis is panel voltage and the y-axis is power which is voltage times current it's a typical MPPT curve, but once the panel is warmed up in the sun, the maximum is closer to 14 volts rather than 17 volts. Of course, that's on a sunny day, but turns out, even on an overcast day, the maximum power point doesn't change much. Here the panel is only putting out 10 watts instead of 75 watts, but the maximum power point is still about 14 volts. So if I put 8 panels in series, the maximum power point would be about 112 volts, which is a little low especially considering you're going to lose a few volts in the wiring and the relays and the switches. So I ordered a ninth panel, which brings the maximum to about 124 volts, which is pretty close to ideal, just a little higher than the battery voltage. So with nine panels on a sunny day, I should be able to charge at about 700 watts. Here's the mounting kit I chose for the panels. It was designed for four full-size panels and has eight support brackets and four seven-foot three-inch rails. But it'll fit four of my smaller panels on each pair of rails, with a ninth panel straddling the two sets of rails in the middle. So now I've got my array mounted and wired with the frame grounded through an eight-foot copper stake as a lightning arrestor. In principle, I could just connect it directly to the battery pack. The voltage on the array would drop to the battery voltage, about 120 volts, and I'd be charging very close to maximum efficiency. But there's still a problem. When I disconnect the battery, the array instantly recovers to its open circuit voltage of about 160 volts, and you get a pretty strong DC arc between the connections. That could wear out a switch or relay pretty quickly. So there should be something to limit the voltage from the panels, and here it is. It's a single high-power N-channel depletion mode MOSFET wired to limit the voltage from the panels to about 126 volts. The gate of the MOSFET is connected to two 60-volt Zener diodes plus a 3.3-volt mini DC-DC converter. Under no load conditions, the input voltage is about 160 volts, and the MOSFET gate is biased at about 123 volts above the negative rail. As a result, the output voltage rises to about 126 volts, just enough to push the gate bias negative to almost cut off, leaving just a trickle current through a leakage resistor. When the vehicle battery is connected, it pulls the voltage across the output down below 120 volts, but the gate is still at about 123 volts, giving positive bias that pushes the MOSFET into conduction, and the panels start charging the battery with only a fraction of a volt across the MOSFET. The battery can then be disconnected at any time without any arcing. Back-to-back -back Zener diodes protect the gate from voltages greater than 20 volts, which shouldn't happen anyway unless there is some major malfunction. 
A thermal fuse mounted directly on the MOSFET protects the MOSFET from overheating in case the BMS fails to disconnect the battery at full charge and pushes the MOSFET into partial conduction. A digital multimeter connected to the output measures the charging voltage, current, and power and tracks the number of kilowatt hours delivered to the vehicle. Now, normally, I want charging to be controlled by the BMS, and for that, I'll need another interface in the vehicle. I need a 12 volt power source for the BMS, and I want it to be separate from the car's main 12 volt electrical system. So I've added a small 2 amp DC DC converter powered by 120 volt DC from the panels. Two Schottky diodes allow either the solar system or the AC charging system to provide 12 volt BMS power without interfering with each other. The converter also supplies power to the control relays. When the BMS determines the charging should start, it connects its charge safety output to ground. That activates a trigger relay, which in turn trips the main relay connecting the incoming high voltage to the main battery. A final high power Schottky diode prevents discharging under any conditions. As an additional protection against overcharging, I've added another overvolted shutoff. It consists of a 12 volt latching relay connected to the battery between the main relay and the final diode through a series of Zener diodes totaling 118 volts. If the main battery voltage ever exceeds 126 volts during charging, the latching relay shuts off power to the main relay. It can only be reset manually with a push button. So here's the interface in the vehicle. I built it in an old microscope slide box. I got dozens of these when I retired. So here is the high voltage power coming in. That's the uh, DC-DC converter. Uh, here's the latching relay and the reset button. These are the Zener diodes. And over here is the relay. I actually put uh, two relays in parallel just to reduce the current on each. And then comes through the uh, final Schottky diode and then that's power going through a fuse to the battery. This is the connection to the BMS, both the power into the BMS and then the relay signal from the BMS. And in the top I've cut ventilation holes for the uh, DC-DC converter, the Schottky diode, and then a small hole for the uh, reset button. And here's the vehicle interface. Mounted down inside the wheel well. To switch from AC to DC charging, I have to swap the cable that comes from the battery connected to the DC charger. Well, I don't have to do that very often. I plan to charge mostly from the uh, solar panels. We're almost done, but I'm adding one more circuit to the carport interface. So the system automatically turns on in the morning and off in the evening. Otherwise, we can have instability at dawn and dusk with the BMS and relay switching on and off erratically due to marginal power. The circuit consists of a nominal 48 volt relay switch between the MOSFET and the multimeter. It's powered by the MOSFET's output voltage through a Zener diode and resistor so that it turns on at about 95 volts and off at about 80 volts. In the off position, current is sent through some resistors as a dummy load that draws slightly more power than the BMS and relays of the vehicle interface. This prevents the system from turning on until there is plenty of power from the panels to run both the BMS and the relays. A 330 microfarad capacitor keeps the relay on for the first few seconds when the supply voltage dips momentarily as it charges capacitors in the DC-DC converter. Similarly, when the relay clicks off due to low power in the evening, the dummy load prevents the voltage from recovering and reclosing the relay. So here's the interface that will be on the carport. I uh, just built it breadboard style. And here's an Anderson connector, so the uh, solar will come in through this connector, through a switch, then to this little 
circuit board. It's got the uh, MOSFET with an attached thermal fuse, a couple of resistors, and a relay. And then from there it goes into this voltmeter and ammeter. Uh, these resistors are the dummy load. And then the power come out through this cable. And this will go to the car through this XT60 connector, which is another type of standard uh, solar connector. Here's a time lapse of it turning on at dawn. The blue voltmeter is showing the voltage to cross the dummy load, so you can see it gradually rising. When it hits 96 volts, the relay clicks on and energizes the system. The voltage immediately rises to 122 volts because the DC-DC converter only draws 20 milliamps in order to power the BMS. But within a few seconds, the BMS trips the charging relay and connects the battery, which drops the voltage back down to 118 volts and charging begins at 60 milliamps. Of course, the current will gradually increase to several amperes as the sun rises. And here it is cycling off at dusk. The current gradually drops to about 30 milliamps, at which point charging stops. Even though the battery is still connected, the vinyl Schottky diode allows the voltage on the charging circuit to dip below the battery voltage. When that voltage drops to about 80 volts, the relay disengages and the whole system shuts down completely, with no power drawn overnight by either the BMS or the multimeter. Okay, so we're all done. Everything's mounted. Just connect the panels here. We're at 124 volts. The connector I've mounted right next to the uh, AC charging port. It's the XT60 connector, so just have to plug in here. And we're charging at 538 watts, which is typical for a winter sunny day. In summer I can get 700 or even 800 watts. So that's my direct solar charger. It's not exactly a supercharger and it turns out to be a little more complicated than I expected. It may be a little more complicated than it had to be. But it suits me just fine. I retired several years ago and don't drive all that much anymore, so the car can just sit here charging 90% of the time. In fact, I've gone almost a year now without using the AC charger at all. It's been 100% solar charging. Thanks for watching.